If the international phonetic alphabet has symbols and sounds you haven't mastered yet, it's time for IPA and IPAs with Molly. Hi everybody, welcome to IPA and IPAs, the unfussy show about the international phonetic alphabet and beer. I'm Molly from Molly Does Dialects, and tonight we are learning about the vowel quadrilateral. But first, what am I drinking? Tonight, I am going to have, from New Belgium, their Sour IPA. I've never tried a Sour IPA before, but I was reading about it on their website. And it says it's 75% IPA and 25% sour, and that it should explode the juiciness. <laughs> I think. I might be misquoting that. Hold on, I'm going to check. That was terrible. Okay, I checked. It elevates the fruit juiciness to a next level sensory experience. I wanted to quote them. It's, that's a really good sentence. So I wanted to quote them directly. So the color on this one, it's, it's hazy, it's very kind of yellow, almost straw colored. It smells... It smells like a lot of IPAs, like I smell the citrus. I smell kind of a lemony grapefruit smell. I'm gonna taste it now, cheers. think I like sour IPAs more than normal IPAs. Somehow the sourness balances out the bitter. I mean it is sour. If you don't like sours you probably won't like this. But I don't find that this bitter. I taste the fruitiness like they said I was going to. I do taste it. That is really good. Let me know if you've tried this one before, if you've had any other sour IPAs. Maybe I should try sour IPAs more. Huh. Who knew? Cheers, everybody. So, the vowel quadrilateral. It looks scary, I know, but we're going to break it down because it's actually just a graph. That's how I want you to think about it. So it has two axes. It's got the horizontal one, which is front to back, and it has the vertical one, which is close to open, and sometimes this is called high to low. And all of the axes, all of the information, it's telling you about the position of your tongue. Because when you make a vowel sound, the only thing that differentiates one vowel sound from another is the position of your tongue. Does that blow your mind? Because it definitely blew my mind when I learned that. When we make consonants, we use our lips and our teeth, the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, and friction and all of that other stuff to make different sounds, but when we make a vowel sound, the only reason it sounds different to us is about tongue position. So this is just a chart of where your tongue is when you're saying which vowels. So as we work on the vertical axis, we have close to open, also called high to low. That's about the amount of arch in your tongue. So the higher your tongue arches to make that sound, the closer it is to the top, and the less arch it needs, the closer it is to the bottom. And then the axis that is front to back is about your tongue's position in your mouth. Is it closer to the front or closer to the back? And that's all this means. So the chart looks scary, but it is. It's just a graph. It's a graph of what your tongue is doing when you make a specific sound. One thing you might be noticing about the vowel quadrilateral is that in some positions, there are two sounds, right? And so what that means is in every position, you can make a vowel sound that's rounded, and you can make one that's unrounded. So all of the rounded ones are going to be on your right-hand side, and all of the unrounded ones are going to be on your left when you're looking at the chart. So, an example, the ah, as in father, is unrounded, but if you round your lips in that same position with your tongue, you'll get the ah, uh, as in lot, cloth. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. That one's slight, but it's different. And it's different because of the rounding of your lips. I do want to address something. If this looks too overwhelming to you, 
then why don't we pause, and I'm going to take out the vowels that we don't use in American English in our kind of standard American. So I'll be right back. All right, so does this look better? I've taken out the vowel sounds that we don't use. I left in a few that we don't use as individual vowels, but we do use them in diphthongs of American English. So like this sound, we don't use it by itself. But this is the first half of the diphthong I, as in pi, ah, I, I. Another one that we don't use purely on its own is O. We use O, O. One more that you might be looking at and going, I don't think I know that, is this one. But you might recognize it if we put roticity on it as the sound in nurse. So really, we started with this, this really cluttered looking quadrilateral, but in all actuality, it's a graph. It tells you where your tongue goes. And these are the ones we're working on right now. So that's the vowel quadrilateral. I hope it wasn't as scary as it looks. I remember the first time I saw it, I thought, oh my God, I'm never gonna understand that. But I did, and you can too. Thank you for joining me on IPA and IPAs to learn about the vowel quadrilateral. Let me know in the comments below, what are you drinking? What do you want me to drink? Do you have questions about the vowel quadrilateral or about IPA in general? Is there something you really, really wanna learn about that I haven't talked about yet? Let me know. I would love to hear from you. Until then, cheers, everybody. You can never fail with the fresh pale ale and molly. Have a good weekend, everybody.